Hi, Caden. Thanks for being here with me today. Hi, thanks for having me on the show again. Good to be on. So you're here with us at our GCFF event this March. So for those who just subscribed to our channel, could you give them a quick introduction of yourself and your company? Sure, sure. That's, that's the perfect place to start. So uh, my name is Galen McNamara. Uh, I'm the CEO of Suma Silver, uh, and I'm a geologist by trade going back about 15 years. Um, most of my time has been spent looking for precious metals. Uh, but but the company Suma Silver is a company that I founded uh, about three years ago in 2020, uh, right during the pandemic, actually, which at the time was uh, very difficult. But later that summer, in the summer of 2020, we had uh, some very good precious metals markets. So that really allowed us to establish our company um, and 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 be strong since then in terms of what we've accomplished uh, on our projects. So both of our projects uh, are in uh, the United States, uh, in Nevada and New Mexico, and our focus is going into these historic, prolific past producers of silver and gold that in their heyday 100 years ago were, were very strong producers but haven't seen much or any modern exploration since then. And I think you find that when you go into these places and you you have a really modern focus and you do the modern science that's needed to make discoveries uh, these days, um, you can be very successful and, and you find there's a lot of uh, low hanging fruit. Great, now let's talk about some updates. Your company has been advancing its projects over the past few months and it just commenced an exploration drill program at the Hills Project in Nevada, as you said. So could you tell us uh, some highlights of it and what are you trying to achieve with this program? Yeah, so that's that's it. So right now we're doing some exploration drilling at, at the Hughes project in Nevada. Uh, and a lot of people don't know that Nevada is actually known as the Silver State. And that's because of these two old Wild West mining areas, one being the Comstock Lode up near Reno and the other the other one being the Tonopah Mining District, uh, where we have the eastern half of the historic Tonopah Mining District and its extensions. District-wide, this, this area produced something like 175 million ounces of silver and almost 2 million ounces of gold at very high grades of over 1,200 grams per ton silver equivalent. So what we're trying to do now is, is, look, is take a shot and look for an extension of the entire district. So we've got seven targets that we're going to be testing over the next month or month and a half, uh, where we've done a lot of work over the last two, three years, between two and three years, um, proving up some some targets that we want to drill using using good science and now it's time for us to take a shot at those and uh and what we're thinking is the question that i'm asking myself is where's the next 100 million ounces in this area so we're going to take a shot at that sounds exciting so we've also seen some positive drilling results at your Magellan project in new mexico could you elaborate a little bit on this and tell us what's the potential of this project yeah, so that's a, another interesting project. Uh, it's called Magion in New Mexico, and thanks for pronouncing it correctly because it's actually very difficult. Uh, this was the largest historic silver producer in New Mexico going back to the 1880s. Uh, and again, no real modern exploration uh, on, on much of the district. So we've spent two seasons drilling there now. We've drilled oh, about 7,500 meters in 19 holes uh, and have had some great success so far. Highlights like 31 meters of 400 and uh, a little under 450 grams per ton silver equivalent, um, 10 meters of 640 grams per ton silver equivalent. But you know, to use a cliche, where you know we're all—I think we're only scratching the surface there. Uh, we've drilled over a, a vein length of about half a kilometer. Well, there's 50 kilometers of vein and perspective structure on the project where we know there's a lot of good mineralization at surface, you know, hundreds to thousands of grams per ton silver equivalent, but hasn't really seen much or any modern exploration. So I, you know, I like to compare an opportunity like this to some of the, the really famous silver districts in Mexico that the Spanish have been mining going back 500 years and indigenous people before that too, where, you know, look, it's like we have an opportunity like that, but we, we kind of get to go back in time in a way with, with modern science and modern weapons and really take a shot at, at finding something I think really big. Now that's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take time. It's not happening tomorrow, but that's the, the scope of the opportunity before us. Sounds great. So with such great uh, projects that you have at the moment, are you planning to add new projects into SUMA in the future? Yeah, you know, I think it's, I think it's, that's an interesting question. I think it's safe to say that we're always looking for ways to make our company better. 
you know, in, in, a, in a way that's accretive. So, you know, up to now that's been via the, via the, via drilling and some really strong drill results, but, you know, we're always looking for potential new projects. Um, we're entrepreneurial by nature. So that's, you know, part of it for sure. I see. And as we know that the bank crisis and the Fed's interest rate hikes have deepened people's fear about the market, with the price of silver, it's about like $24 per ounce at the moment. Where do you see silver price to be in the second half of the year? Yeah, that's like the, the big question, I think, for a company like ours. And I think the first part of that question is, I agree with you in that right now we're seeing a little bit of a flight to liquidity because there's so much uncertainty with what's going on with the debt ceiling. You know, what's what with what's going on politically that, you know, I, I think people uh, are a bit nervous and would rather be in, you know, more in cash right now than in than in stocks than in silver stocks. But you know, I look at what happened in in March of 2020 with the whole covid pullback and it was a similar situation. You know, there was a flight to liquidity. And then after that, though, uh, I, you know, the fundamentals took over uh, and precious metals had a very strong, you know, six months to say a year uh, after that. Um, where you saw very, very strong gains in both the metal, uh, but also uh, stocks, precious metal stocks and silver and gold stocks. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of this year, even though now it's a, it's a little, it's a little tough. Great. So those are definitely some great insights that the investors should take note of. So Galen, my last question for you is that, are there any catalysts or upcoming milestones that new investors should expect? Yeah, absolutely. So for us, we're in a we're in a good position. We've got ten million dollars uh, Canadian in the bank, so we're drilling now in Nevada, uh, and we're going to get back to drilling in September in New Mexico. So for us, it's really a drill-driven discovery story. You know, at the in the early stages of 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 that of the you know what we call the Lasan curve. So I mean, for us, it's you know I, I ask myself if if you like silver uh, and you like you know, drilling stories because, you know, you've seen what's happened to other companies when they get onto something big. Well, assume as a stock that I think is worth taking a look at. Perfect. So that's it for today. Thank you for being here with me today again, Valen. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. It's always great to join. Thank you.